Hi, I'm Andrew Holschult. Uh, I'm a composer and a sound designer in the game industry and a composer on The Ancient Gods. Hi, I'm uh, David Levy, composer, sound designer, um, film, television, and, and now a AAA title, Doom. So my, my first question is like, they're probably all going to be Mickey Mouse, but the first one is ex extremely Mickey Mouse. Who does what? How does this work? There are two of you. I do There's everything. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, just, I just sit in the back and Rick Rubin it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like on the couch, like, yeah, sounds good, David. <laughs> no, no uh, like we, we, we both work independently and uh, like um, it will hand us uh, kind of a spreadsheet of, hey, we want you to work on this level and you to work on this level. And we both um, just kind of, we have our own sections of each DLC. So we get to, we get to focus on that and just work on, work on each one. Yeah, it's kind of segmented, but um, we're like, we talk all the time about everything. And um, uh, yeah. we, there's a lot of uh, information exchange about what we're doing, how we're doing it, the, the instrumentation, and we send each other like work in progress clips throughout the process just to make sure we're like, you know, in the same key when we need to be. Because sometimes certain scenes will go, uh, certain, certain uh, there's, there's a lot of cutscenes in there in the game. And we have to make sure, like, um, I was handling the majority of the cutscenes, and I have to make sure that I'm like in the in the right key, so um, so it will flow really nicely. So I needed to know what key he was in, and we would exchange tempos and things like that to make sure that everything kind of meshes when it's in the game, so it doesn't feel, you know, too disjointed. Nice. Since it's two people working on it, yeah. Well, and I, yeah. And I guess so. Sorry, Andrew, go ahead. No, 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 I was just agreeing. Yeah. Say hello to my cat. I'm sure he'll oh, try to... Oh, oh, now he's cutting the... Sorry. He'll make an appearance That's such a cutie. Yeah, that's, that's such a great <laughs> coat. Oh, my goodness. It's cute, but it's also annoying because yeah. it's too many <laughs> Zoom meetings. Too, well, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> it's so many places to go from that, and I'm probably going to have to loop around and stuff. But sure, sure. We'll, we'll get there in the end. Um, Andrew, I want to kind of start with you because, obviously, this is your first official Doom um, soundtrack, but it's it's not yeah. your first Doom soundtrack. Did that did that factor into you getting selected in any way? I know there was a bit of fan um, cry outcry to to get you involved, or how much do you think that helped? I guess is the first question. Um, I, I think that the fans are kind of the uh, the judge and jury and executioner in a lot of that stuff. Um, any game I've ever been with, it's 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 um, you know who your audience is and who you can who you can sell the product to, kind of kind of dictates that a little bit you know what i mean like if you're working on a shooter and it's in a certain vein of a certain genre and you happen to know somebody who's has kind of a little bit of a following you might want to go with them but like to kind of focus in on the doom thing uh idkfa i do feel like uh played kind of a part with with me being able to uh interface with the community and becoming friends with a lot of those people and we're all just one really big Tight knit family, especially throughout the retro FPS revival that we've had since uh, Doom 2016. Um, that's come along with that. Uh, yeah, I, I do feel like that kind of did play a little bit of a part. And like, I'm, it was just, it was just fun doing it. And like, you know, back in 2013 when I first started it, and it just started out as a, hey, I just kind of want to do this. This is kind of fun. And then it spiraled into this is probably one of the bigger things that you'll you'll do. <laughs> for a while at least and and yeah like uh it's it's followed me everywhere so i i do think that it did contribute in some way to it for sure uh but that also um it's it's mm, I, I like to think that that my work ethic tied into it a little bit more too because i, I like i've shown that you know you can deliver on this on this front with this game and this front with this game and this front with this game and so they're like, okay, he's, you know, not only can he make, you know, the cool mod stuff, but, and, you know, the music's, the music's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but he can also, uh, he can also, you know, hit these times that we need him to and that kind of stuff. And Quake Champions is, is a good example of, it's, that's not a mod, it was an official yeah. thing. How, how, it's, it's similar, but not. Like, they're obviously Doom and Quake are very tied together, but yeah. how, how similar are soundtracks for Doom and Quake? Are there things that kind of flow through or is it a completely different set of experiences to you? I'd say that they're 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 a little more different. Quake's a little bit more on the feeling side, um, kind of uh with like the Lovecraftian stuff going on. 
Yeah, yeah. And uh I like it's 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 a little bit more on the darker grungy feeling industrial side. Whereas Doom feels a lot more like, how aggressive do you want this? You know, like, because there's a knob that says 10, but we can take it to 20 if you'd like, you know. Um, but Quake, uh, under the direction of Adam Pyle, whenever I was working on that, that was, uh, yeah, I'd say a, a, a totally different experience. Uh, we were working with Richard Long's art. He was sending me that stuff. Uh, he's the guy who is uh, does the art for Tentacles and Teeth. And um, I just got really inspired by it. And I was like, man, this is, this is really cool. And listening to Chris Vrenna's work that he did with it, I was like, how can I compliment this in a completely different way? You know what I mean? Like something that's, that still fits in the universe, but is, uh, but s still works it, and isn't just a carbon copy of what's come before it. And it was, it was just more about feelings and how can I pull emotions? And I feel like you can kind of feel that from track to track. Yeah, everybody likes to go over to uh, Dimension of the Doomed and they're like, yeah, metal, you know. But if you go over to the other three tracks, there's a lot of stuff that'll start kind of pulling strings. Like there's some of that stuff I'm like, oh man, that, that's, that's definitely pulling some emotional strings for me whenever I was done. And I really like that. Like if you're winning or losing, it's, it's doing a little bit of that back and forth. But yeah, Doom is a lot more aggressive in your face, but also you have to keep a pace with it to where even whenever you're walking around, you feel like a badass, you know, because that's doom guy is, he's, he's a badass. That was a, that was a Lovecraft point and a point at David's cat who is equally as gorgeous as my own <laughs> just for the record. The gorgeous one is here. He's white. I don't want to move him right now. He's beautiful. <laughs> he's so comfy. I don't want to pick him up. Don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> now this might be a gross assumption and tell me if i'm wrong andrew but i feel like metal is kind of like your playground i feel like that's where you're comfortable composing is that is that accurate or is that me just being like a complete asshole no no like I, I, it's fair to assume that for sure uh like i mean i'm really good at it i <laughs> hold on <laughs> that no, no, no. sounds like i'm an asshole do not be humble no 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 that's awesome that's that is very I, like, metal uh, take it uh, apparently i'm 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 okay at it you know like i i, I have a grasp on what what people enjoy about about the genre and i know what i like and i just you know i kind of i just got a big filter i kind of try to figure out you know hey what's something that i haven't heard that you know my friend likes that he can show me that i can then you know take into the filter and kind of go all right let's put this now into the metal for this soundtrack that kind of stuff so yeah that's a fair assessment but really i like to branch out more too like the the medieval stuff that i'm doing right now is completely different it's all synth and strings based uh so is wrath wrath is very heavy and damn and ambience and, and, and very moody um and i'd say quakes actually a little bit different too uh like we were saying, Quake has a lot more of those feelings to it. And there's another game coming down the pipe in a couple of years that is it's completely different than anything else. So, you know, while I really love this and I'll champion it all day long, no problem. You want some you want some drums and some big ass fucking guitars, you know, let's go. Uh, I don't mind stepping out and trying new things because as an artist, if you don't do that, you it your environment starts to become toxic like you have to go out and try new things and david looking at the posters behind you like knowing about genlock and ruby obviously doom doom is quite a, a different thing than, sure than is. straight up metal <laughs> is is where where's your comfort zone are you you know equally happy to be able to to jump between things or like what drew you to to do maternal i guess is the, is the I question don't, i don't have a comfort zone i'm uncomfortable at every project i start <laughs> <laughs> doesn't matter what it is if it's orchestral if it's something i do um uh, it's just um knowing what what the sound is what it needs to be and getting there one way or another um this is yeah. definitely the most aggressive thing i've ever worked on um, I feel like a lot of the tools that I used and a lot of techniques and stuff that I used in Genlock were just amplified by a hundred on, on, on Doom. Um, all the synth work that I've done on Genlock was, seemed like a walk in the park in comparison to what needed to be done in Doom. And, um, uh, that's a funny thing with Doom is it doesn't matter how, how much you think you, you're pushing your, your, your gear and, and your sounds, it's, it's, it's never enough. You can always go more. 
Um, it's, it's a beautiful thing. And it could also be crippling at times because it's like, am I hitting it hard enough? You know? Um, so yeah, um, to answer your question, it, it is it's vastly different from when I worked before, but also like the whole metal and aggression thing is, is kind of stuff I was, I, I grew up on. I've been listening to stuff since forever. I'm, I'm a drummer and I'm all about rhythms and all about heavy stuff. And it's, it's always, it's like all those riffs and things are in, in the back of my head for as long as I can remember. And in Doom, I could just unleash it, which was a lot of fun. Um, and, and things came out of me that I didn't know I was able to do, which is always surprising. Um, if it's up or uh, if it, you know, if it's, if it's up to the quality that, that everyone's expecting, I, I, I hope it is, but it was, uh, it was definitely, it was definitely a lot of fun to work on this. It was challenging. It was fun. It was terrifying. It was, it was everything in one. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess something that you might not be as used to, again, if I'm over generalizing, just oh, yeah. t t yell yeah. at me, please. Um, yeah. a lot, like a lot of the Rooster Teeth stuff is, is scripted. It's, it's set. It's, it's this much time happens. There's a thing we need right. to fill in this much space. We're obviously a video game. There's cutscenes that do that, but there's the gameplay in general, which you know anything can happen. Yeah. How, how do you pivot? God, that's such a pandemic word. No, 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 no it's true. No, how do you pivot it, into that? No, no, it's true. <laughs> it, is, it is very different. Like, cause I come from television and film, and in television and film, you get a scene. And you obviously, after you acknowledge what the scene is and what emotions you're supposed to invoke, you go at it and you have it. You know, it's three and a half minutes. Um, you have to hit this emotion, start playing, see how it affects everything. And you get you get feedback instantly as you're writing it, what it's doing and how it's doing it. Now, in games, um, this was my first AAA title. I've worked on other games, but nothing to this scope, nothing this magnitude. And uh, the way the music works in this game is you got to write in three different layers of intensity. You got ambient music, you got light combat and heavy combat. And each section or each layer will be a, will have, a, let's say, five minutes of music. But you're writing a five minute long track that needs to be segmented into, into many pieces that will be shuffled around by the engine. So the player always gets a fresh take and a fresh feel when they play it because they never hear the music the same way which is very different from film because in film you write it from from start to end and you're done and here you have to see all right is the beginning going to work with part four out of seven and is the, is, is the end going to work if you insert it in the middle so it needs to be modular and it needs to sound like fluid and and it needs to work no matter what so that for me was um a little hard to wrap my brain around at first and um but you know um, once we got into it, I, I, I think I got the hang of it. And also, um, you have that within, you know, all those moving pieces within just one layer of intensity. You have to make sure that those will flow into the, the light combat and the ambient stuff. So everything needs to work together, which is incredibly uh, challenging. Um, so in that sense, it was, it was very different from, from writing for film. Um, yeah. Andrew, if you have anything to add, please. I don't want to. I mean, you you hit all the nails on the head right there. That's <laughs> all, all right. the points. Oh, let's, let's, we're done. Interview over. Um, <laughs> no, got, setting the stage, background questions kind of complete, like on to Doom now. Uh, and there's yeah. probably like 50 ways to tackle this. So I'm just going to kind of start where I think so and feel free to, to both answer, to throw it to one another, whatever you want to do. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't want to talk about like why Mick Gordon is obviously not doing the DLC Compo com you know, composition, but he did the, the base game. Um, I, I guess I'm curious to how much that factors into what you guys had to do. If there's like core Doom tenets that are just like accepted by everyone, or if there are core Doom tenets that are like passed down from id being like, you, you must do this. Like how, how much of that <laughs> did you have to factor in before you even get into like the, the, the two collaborators thing, how much of that stuff did you have to factor into what you guys were, were doing for the DLC? Uh, they, they gave us, it pretty much gave us a clean slate whenever we started. Um, whenever they contacted us, we, uh, the, one of the first things that they made sure to, to tell us was, Hey, you know, we, we want your, your vision of doom. It doesn't have to sound a certain way. We want you to have creative free, you know, free reign on, on whatever you're making. But of course, um, that being said, you know, as an artist, you like, you absolutely want to respect what came before you. And I love 2016's and Eternal soundtracks. Like they're awesome. Yeah. 
Yeah. Mick has some amazing stuff even before that too. His Killer Instinct stuff is great. Yeah. Um, I'm a fan myself. Really I know cool. David is as well. Uh, but um, yeah, they, they give us free reign. And I, I know that me and David had a couple talks about it where we were like, uh, we really wanted to respect what had come before us because it's a, it's a part of uh, it's a part of the IP on what's come for it with two games prior, right? So you have Eternal and you have 2016 that both have a very unique approach to music, both a little bit different from each other, but still in the same same core concept. And we were like, okay, cool. How do we how do we take this and build on it, but also put our own uh, our own spin on it and our own right. creative touch on things and how would, how would you do this? You know? And it was really cool about it. They just, they were like, yeah, all right, right on. You, you know, you, you do whatever you want. And since we're both fans of it, I think it's, I think that we did uh, the closest that we could uh, like going back and forth and sharing files. Like, Hey, what do you think of this? How do you think of that? What do you think of that? I I, I think that we QA'd it between each other enough to where um, things came out to where we'll like, we like it and we think a lot of other people will like it as well. Yeah. Nice. Um, so was it kind of the case of you, the two of you sat down and said it has to have A, B, and C or one of no. you recorded a thing and said, this no. is what I'm thinking and you just built upon it? Like how did, how no, did you get really. it from... How did you do it? No, it was, <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it was totally... It was, <laughs> oh, you mean oh, just in general? Well, I think like, it's kind of what Andrew was saying. Like, we were inspired by what came before us, but yeah. we also hired not we were hired to do our own thing with respect to what was done before. So that's always in the back of our heads. Um, and then we're kind of building on that because, because you know, with, with the aggression and the certain elements that the that, that Doom music um, almost kind of asks for. So we're, we're hitting those, but in our own way, with our own twist on it. Yeah, whether that comes um, with like a synthesizer or guitar right, or something to start with. Right. It can be anything. Uh, but it was never we never sat down and said oh we need this this and that but there, there's certain things certain elements that we both knew that we got to hit and you know it's just the aggressive sense and 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 the heavy drums and the guitars and and just the overall kind of raw aggressive emotion that that was established so well in, in the yeah. first couple games yeah are there like certain segments or themes or, or styles that you, like either each of you can kind of like take credit for and, and own is like, yeah, that this is my, this is my addition. This is my like signature element of this soundtrack. Um, that's a good question. The, the one that comes to mind for, for me, like, and it's not really like a, like a signature thing per se, but it's the fact that like, I was able to kind of work in with the bass to make it sound real, like muddy and swampy for blood swamps. And like some of those big bins, I was just like, all I could think was like, if you're just walking through swamps of blood, what are the guitar yeah. riffs supposed to sound like? You know what yeah. I mean? So like that, yeah, uh, just some casual everyday thoughts, you know, <laughs> like, but, but, uh, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Especially if you're driving on the freeway, <laughs> but, but like, um, if, uh, that was like, I think the one thing between the two DLCs where I was like, oh, you know, that was kind of neat how that worked out. It doesn't always work out like that. Um, but whenever you get some some really interesting assets that, you know, kind of clicks from artist to artist, that's when those moments happen. But it doesn't always happen. But it was, that was pretty cool for me. What about you, David? Do you have anything like that? I guess kind of similar in, in, in a way with... Um... With Atlantica. Was, yeah, I was, was, I was going to say, I, I think I hear something in Atlantica. For sure. Yeah, I yeah. mean, the whole oil rig, I started by just um, the whole rhythm thing. There's a lot of metallic elements in it, like pipes and such, just kind of embodying the, the surroundings. Um, and then, you know, just, just all the synth work and and everything that came along with it to, to complement um, and enhance the visuals. But uh, yeah, other than that, I mean, just kind of playing off of whatever we have. <laughs> yeah. Gotta, yeah. <laughs> now, again, I'm probably grossly oversimplifying, and it just tell me off if I am. But <laughs> if you think about Doom and you think about Doom soundtracks, it's like, -da 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 -da, like intense guitar. Like you don't think, just act. Don't don't pause. Don't stop. Keep going. Um, do you have the chance to get to build in other like? 
what's the word I want? Not notes, but like the light to the dark, the, the quiet, the calm, the, the relaxing to the super high intensity. Am I, am I just completely overlooking those? No, no, those, for sure. Those no, points? You, no, yeah, yeah. No, you, we you got do. that. Yeah, all yeah. the ambient stuff. That's the beauty of this game. It's like you do have to write in three different intensities. So, you know, when you scavenge around and when there's no fighting, really, it's all ambient music. And there's a whole suite of music for that. Yep. And then there's the light combat, which is a little heavier. And then the heavy combat, which is as heavy as it gets. And that's all those, those riffs that, that you're referring to. Um, for, um, and also, I, for myself, I was doing the majority of the cutscenes, So that was also a lot of fun because they hit different emotions all the time. So I was yeah. able to play more into, like, the ambient stuff as well, um, which is not, like... Um, song driven really because it's more of a score because i'm scoring a two picture um and i know andrew you, you've done a few of those as well so i'm sure you can yeah do that as well yeah like um whenever it's the uh the cutscene stuff that that's kind of the, the moments where you can you can kind of pull on the emotional strings if you really want to yeah. per se uh I, I say emotional uh there's only a few emotions in Doom. <laughs> <laughs> intestines um, and emotions. Yeah, both, yeah, you're or. pulling at the intestines of the of the player. Yeah, yeah. No, but um, that that's uh, some of the more uh, musically dynamic parts that you're thinking of. I think whenever you ask that question. Yeah. So yeah, there, there's there's moments like that. But in terms of what uh, David was talking about with engine, uh, yeah, like you can go from an area where there's no one around. You want to make sure that the experience is still uh, still has pace and still has feeling, trying to tell you, hey, you know, maybe you should keep moving. The music's trying to tell you to keep moving, other than the green arrows every or the green lights everywhere, you know. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, like the the ambient stuff is still has to keep a pace and still has to keep you moving, but also you want it to kind of um, showcase what's around you as well. Like you kind of build it to the art that's that's surrounding you, rather than just kind of in a vacuum. So I'd say that that's also part of the uh, a little bit more dynamic portion of it is some of the ambient stuff, light combat and heavy combats mainly for I need to rip your arm off as fast as I can and hit yeah. you with it. Yeah. You know, a funny that's, thing about yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Andrew, go ahead. No, no, yeah, you're good. The funny done. thing about those layers is like at least for me, like I was really struggling with. Um, with um with the, with the light combat stuff because it's a weird thing to hit um, it is it's probably it is the most difficult it was and yeah. i didn't i didn't think that like the ambient okay you can hit the ambient that's no problem and we can hit the heavy we know that um it's finding that middle zone the middle zone is very strange because it needs to be hard enough to drive you but it can't be too driving so that was kind of challenging. It was kind of like, that was kind of a curveball uh, for me. Yeah. I, I didn't expect it to be as challenging as it was. Uh, uh, just a little side note about, you know, the different different things that we have to hit. And yeah, I think, I, I, think, I think with each level, it was it was like that. We were both like, is yeah. the light combat good enough? Is the light combat good yeah. enough? You know, like, and we'd bounce it back and forth with yeah. uh, Chad Mossholder. And he was, you know, if there was anything that he was like, hey, maybe maybe think about something else here, you know, or tweak that. Right. But for the most part, like it was we were we were cool with with most things that we handed in. Yeah. yeah. Does the, does the toughest to compose mean the the most rewarding in the end or is it like no, nah, I just hated light combat and it was so much more fun to do the, <laughs> to do the heavy stuff. What what did you enjoy the most? Each of you, obviously. Well, it wasn't it, it it wasn't like I like I hate doing this or anything like that. It was oh, yeah. more like it was it was like uh was it challenging? It, yeah, it was just it was just, right it was just mentally challenging. It was like somebody asking you a question that you're just like, I have no answer for that. And I really need to think <laughs> about that. Like you can you can come to a conclusion, no problem. Yeah. But you got to make sure it's the right conclusion. That's all. Right. right. Um, I think that like I enjoyed the heavy combat the most throughout the entire thing because sure. it's it's bread and butter through Doom. And the further along that we got, like the more sound design that uh Chad kind of was like, hey, maybe try this, maybe try that. And David started kind of pushing towards as well, started saying, hey, you should try out this gear. I have these plugins. They do really good work for me. You should try them on your synths, stuff like that for me. Like I, I learned a wealth of knowledge from these guys. And I, I feel like that all played a lot into heavy combat. So I think I had the most fun there. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I would be lying if I said it wasn't the most fun. 
Um, I, I often started with the heavy stuff. Um, yeah, I would, I usually, I start with the heavy stuff and at least with the second DLC, I start with the heaviest and then I went to the ambient and then of course I'm like, shit, where do I go now? <laughs> yeah. That middle part is tricky because you don't know, you know, how much to push the instruments and, and how, how aggressive should it be? Cause you are fighting, but you're not fighting that much. Um, need to make them so, sound different yeah yeah so yeah mm -hmm. again like just to go over what andrew said it wasn't that it wasn't fun it was just like just nailing the right sound um was was um was harder than it was a little less obvious less less of an obvious road mm -hmm. to get to it yeah yeah and you gotta love a good pr note tech or not technically as far as we know you guys are concluding the doom eternal saga so was that a factor in, in having to get some of that like really high intensity stuff perfect because you know like this is that's a lot of responsibility to have on your shoulders or maybe you didn't even care about it at all uh, I, I think it was just like we, we just want the music to be like great for a dlc yeah. and we want it to be a great experience yeah that's all overall, that's all for sure yeah it wasn't anything specific for track it's just like mm -hmm. fuck this up <laughs> yeah yeah if it's if it's not fun throw it out yeah right exactly yeah. If you had the chance to return for a full, a full proper Doom sequel, would you, uh, would you jump on it? Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. I mean, are you kidding? This has been a, a dream job. <laughs> oh, it'd be awesome. Like I, yeah. working with it on, on the Ancient Gods is, is such a good experience. Yeah. Like I, I've worked with a lot of developers in the past, and this is, this is just on the same slate of I had fun here and I had fun here. Like there was, there wasn't any much of a difference. Yeah. Um, we'd be honored to return to future projects, Absolutely. but like, you know, for the time being, I, I'm just as excited to know what they would be as you are. I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> well, from what I've heard, I am down for you guys returning as well. Um, awesome. do you want to, do you want to plug anything of your own? doesn't have to be, obviously it doesn't have to be Doom Eternal. We know that you've done the Doom Eternal DLC soundtrack. Anything you want to talk about before I let you go? I just learned that Genlock is on HBO as of a week ago. I had no idea. Oh. I'm going to say that. That's awesome. <laughs> Where's my royalties? Just going to make some uncomfortable Finally. phone calls in a little while. Yeah. <laughs> uh, comparison guitars are awesome. They sent me right at the beginning of The Ancient Gods, the first one. They sent me a seven string, and then I went and bought an eight string from them because I really liked them, and I just... I just signed with them and yeah, like you should check them out. They're, they're seriously amazing guitars and they've been on the entire DLC. Nice. You know, I like to add that I'm still waiting with sponsorship. I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Compared to guitars, good. come on. Anything, yeah. drums, socks, yeah, yeah. whatever. I'm, I'm <laughs> hit, up, hit up DW, dude. Hit, me hit up. up DW. <laughs> Your Survivor t-shirt is in the mail. Don't worry about it. I'll yeah. chuck it in. Yeah. <laughs> That's all you get, though. Sorry. Um, <laughs> it's been such a, a treat talking to you both. Thank you so much. Um, stay. Thank you. I know Texas is 100% is open. I don't know how you feel about that, but stay oh, safe. Oh, my and, goodness. And, yeah. yeah. Oh. Let's avoid the coronavirus talk as much yeah. as we can. But yeah. stay safe. Yeah. Um, thank you both so much for your time. Always appreciate it. Thanks very Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Take care. All right, man. Have a good one.